Lintels. In this movie, we'll look at the lintels section of the pricing sheet. The NHE Plus does most of the hard work for us and uses the information we've already entered in the window and door frame section to automatically calculate the lengths and quantities of the lintels that we'll require. Better still, we remain in complete control and this section of the pricing sheet provides us with all the flexibility we'll need to fine-tune the details easily. Let's take a look. Lintel length. OK, first we'll look at the layout of this section. Here on the left, we have the lintel lengths. By default, these are based on increments of 0.3. So as we go down the list, the length of each lintel goes up by 0.3. We can adjust this setting and we'll look at how in the lintel increments section of this movie. Next, we have the type of lintel. Again, this is preloaded with default materials. These are easily adjusted. Just use the drop down menu. Program is preloaded with numerous lintel types. We just pick the one that meets the needs of the job. Let's click on this red question mark. In here, we have the default setting for the bearing. At the moment, it's set at 0.15 linear meters at each side of the lintel. So we can change this if required. The NHE Plus has used the information that we have entered in the windows and doors section and automatically worked out the length and quantity of lintels we'll need. For example, here we can see that we need 14 lintels that are 1.5 linear meters long. It's calculated this by looking at the number and size of the frames we entered. It's then allowed for the bearing on each side and then based on the default increments, selected a suitable lintel for us. We do need to check the type of lintel in the drop down box and use our judgment to specify the type that we'll require. If we click on this info icon here, we're provided with details of how the NHE Plus works out the lintel length. But let's watch this process in action. The lintels we need for this job are worked out, so let's add in another window. We'll go back to the window and door frame section of the pricing sheet. OK, let's put in an additional window. We'll add in this one. Notice its width. It's 1.343. We'll enter one of these. As soon as we put this number in, the program will multiply bearing allowance for the lintel that we looked at earlier by 2. So this is 0.3. It will add this onto the width of the window we've just entered, giving us a total of 1.643. It isn't possible to get a lintel that's 1.643 long. So as we can see, back here at the lintels section, the program has looked at the available lintels, and based on the increments, it's allowed for a lintel that's 1.8 linear meters. We then just check that the type of lintel is suitable. If it didn't meet the criteria, we can change it in the drop-down menu. We can view information on choosing the lintel type by clicking this blue information icon. Lintel increments. As we've seen in the previous movie section, by default the lintel increment is set at 0.3 linear meters. This means that the lintel lengths that are listed here go up by 0.3 linear meters as we go down the list. We can change this if we want. This is so useful if the preferred manufacturer makes lintels that increase by a different default amount. Before we look at how we can adjust this, we'll remember that in the previous movie section, we added in an additional window. The size of the window, plus the bearings, gave us a length of 1.643. Due to the default increment setting, the NHE Plus selected a lintel that was 1.8 linear meters long for this window, as that was the first available lintel that would be long enough. Let's look at how we adjust the increments. OK, so at the top we have this thumbnail picture. Let's click it. First, we tell the program the increment or measurement we want it to increase each listed lintel by. Let's put in 0.15 linear meters. Next, we need to tell the program the length of the smallest lintel we want to list. This is the program's starting point for the increments. Let's enter 0.9 linear meters. Now, we click Calculate. Instantly, a new set of default lintel lengths are worked out for us based on this new increment setting. Another neat thing is this. Look, because we now have a lintel length of 1.65 available, and the program knows this is a much closer match for the additional window frame we entered, it's removed the lintel that was 1.8 linear meters long and reselected this 1.65 linear meter one instead. One thing that we will need to do if we change the default increments is just go through and check that the selected material is not just the correct type, but also the correct length. Due to the length of the description, the magnifying glass makes this much easier. 
let's just change this back to the default setting of 0.3. Also, before we go on to the next movie section, we will just remove the extra window frame we entered earlier, as that's not required for our job. Additional lintel types. As we've seen, the NHE Plus automatically works out the length and quantity of lintels required for us based on the information that we've entered in the window and door frame section. For example, 14 of our windows all need a lintel that is 1.5 linear metres long. It may be the case that some of these 14 lintels could require a different type of lintel. For example, some of them may be on the ground floor, others may be on the first floor, and so on. This is really straightforward to sort out. Here we have the additional lintel type button. Let's click the Add Second Lintel Type button. OK, as we can see when we click this, the NHE Plus generates a second section for lintels. We will notice that there are blue boxes. We'll also notice that not every lintel length has a blue box. The program has cleverly looked at our existing requirements and only provided a blue box on the lintel lengths that actually have a lintel in. So in the first lintel section we have 14 lintels that are 1.5 linear metres long. Seven of these are on the first floor and will require a different type of lintel. We just enter seven in the blue box that corresponds with the 1.5 linear metre length. See, the program has automatically deducted these seven from the original 14, ensuring we don't end up with too many or too few. Now we just tell the program the type of lintel that will be required for these by using the drop down menu. We can repeat this process again. Just click the add third type of lintel box. Again, the same process occurs. If we enter two, in the blue box of this section that corresponds with the 1.5 linear meter length lintels. Again, the program will deduct this amount from the 1.5 linear meters lintel in our first section, leaving us with five 1.5s in the first section, seven in the second section, and two here in the third. Combination frames and lintels. As we've seen in the previous movie sections, when we enter our window and door frames, the program automatically looks at the openings on an individual basis and then works out the lintels required. It may be on some jobs that we have adjoining frames. Let's click this info icon. A typical example of this, as shown in this picture, is a window and door being adjacent to each other. Rather than two separate lintels, just one would be used to span the entire opening. We can allow for this in our pricing sheet. As a rule, we don't recommend overtyping in white boxes. These are preloaded with calculations, and once they are removed, unless we click undo straight away, we can't get the calculation back. Allowing for the lintels for adjoining frames is an exception to this rule. We'd first work out the length of the lintel we would need for the opening of the adjoining frame. We would then enter the quantity required in the corresponding lintel length box. Next, we'd need to deduct the lintels that were no longer needed from the relevant quantity column and type the new amount into the quantity box. Internal door opening lintels. In the internal door opening lintels section, we need to tell the program the quantity of internal, single or double doors that we'll require. We also need to specify if these will be load bearing or non-load bearing. It's really straightforward. Okay, so we have red boxes. We just need to enter any relevant quantities that we'll need. On our job, we have six single internal doors that will require a non-load bearing lintel. We can enter six into this red box, or we can click on the question mark and use the visual reference like this. We will be using a crinkle lintel for this. We can adjust the type here in the drop-down box. Remember, we have the magnifying glass if the description can't all be seen. We also have eight internal single doors that are load-bearing. Let's click the question mark. We'll enter eight. As these are load-bearing, they'll need a box lintel. We do need to remember to also check the length and ensure that the correct type and length is chosen. We don't have any internal load-bearing or non-load-bearing double doors. If we did, we just enter the quantities in here. It's essential that we remember to complete these red boxes if they are required as the program will use this information to calculate all the costs for our internal doors in the first and second fixed carpentry sections of the pricing sheet. Concrete sills. Allowing for concrete sills is really easy. 
we just tick this box to open the subsection. The program will automatically calculate the length and quantity of sills required based on the information that we entered earlier in the window and door frame section. First, click the red question mark. Here we can see the default measurement for the overhang allowance to each side of the concrete sill. So this is how far the sill is going over the opening at each side. We can change this if we want. The program will multiply this number by 2 and add it to the length of the opening. This is how it calculates the length of sill we'll require. Next, we just need to check the type of sill meets our requirements. If it doesn't, use the drop-down menu to choose something else. The sill lengths, by default, are based on increments of 0.3, like the lintels we saw earlier. We can use this thumbnail to adjust the increment if the manufacturer we use supplies different lengths. Again, we just enter the increment or measurement we want each sill to increase by, then we tell the program the length of the smallest sill. Click Calculate. Everything works out instantly. If we change the increments, we must just check that the type of sill in the drop-down matches the new lengths that we have chosen. OK, we don't have any concrete sills on our job, so we need to switch this off. Just tick this box, the section closes, and the costs won't be included in our quote. Other items. The other items that relate to the lintels section of the pricing sheet are in the others section. Let's work our way down it and take a look. Cavity trays are first. By default, this is switched on, and we can see the quantities and costs for it. It may be that the lintel type that's been selected doesn't require a cavity. We can switch this off by unticking this box. Instantly, everything's removed. We do want these, so let's switch it back on. If we'd selected ICF or Styrostone as our lintel type, then we may want to allow for these steel rods. Let's click the question mark. These go inside the lintel and the concrete is put over the top. If we switch this on, the program will look at the length of all lintels. Allow for a default bearing of 0.15, then work out the amount of rebar that will be required. We can adjust the bearing here in the picture, as well as the number of rebars per lintel. We don't require this, as we're not using ICF lintels, so we'll switch this off. If we need to allow for other lintels, for example a lintel over a fireplace opening, then we can enter the quantity here in this blue box, then use the drop-down menu to select the lintel type. We have several options that enable us to allow for various beams, these being steel universal, steel channel and any timber beams. They all work in the same way. We select the required material, then just enter the number of linear metres that we will need for the job into the corresponding blue box. Here, we can allow the hours for any prefabrication that may be required on the steel beams. Finally, if we've opted for beams, and the delivery cost isn't included within the above cost, we can enter the delivery charges in this box here. Remember, if we enter an amount in here, it does just need to be the cost. Any markups or VAT will be added when we get to the summary sheet. Padstones. If padstones are needed, we can allow for them here. Calculating the cost is really simple. Let's click the thumbnail picture. OK, first we tell the programme the number of padstones that we'll require. Then we specify the type of padstone. So if it is brick, click this option so it's ticked. If we want blocks or concrete padstones, click this option so it's ticked. We then tell the programme the quantity of bricks or blocks, concrete padstones, that will be used on each pad. By default, it's set as six bricks and one block. We can change this by typing the required number into the corresponding yellow box. We then just use the drop-down menu to specify the material that will be used. Just to show you, let's enter four pad stones. We'll specify bricks and we'll leave the default settings as six bricks per pad and use this brick type. Click Enter Details. It's all worked out for us. All of the costs and hours for these are calculated. The hours are based on the standard setting. Laying padstones may be more time consuming, so if we want, we can up the hourly rate. We can do this by overtyping the hours in the yellow box, or we can click the handy clock and increase it by a percentage in here. We don't require any padstones on our job, so we'll just remove the number from the blue box. Weepers. Weepers are automatically worked out for us. Let's click on the question mark to see how. This also provides us with a visual reference. 
OK, so here we can see the length from the end of the lintel to the first weeper. This is the default setting, but we can change it if we want. Here's the maximum spacing between weepers. Again, we can change this. If we click this blue info icon, we can see further information on how the weepers have been worked out. We can allow for stop ends for our weepers. We don't require these, so we will leave it switched off. Extra row and toe tools. As we've seen, the lintel section of the pricing sheet is preloaded with all the common and not so common items or tasks that we may require. But if we do need to include something in this section that isn't listed, we do have the option to allow for it by using the extra row button located here. To add an extra item, click this button. An extra row will be generated and straightforward instructions about how to add the item are provided. Or we can click the info icon here first. This also provides instructions. Breakdown totals for our materials, hours and labour are all here and we can see the overall total for this section here. We can view a snapshot of this section by clicking the View Summary button. We'll be taken to the summary sheet. To return to the pricing sheet, click this button.